Have you ever gazed at the night sky and wondered if we are alone in this vast universe? It's a question that has captivated the human imagination since the dawn of time. The twinkling stars, the radiant moon, the distant galaxies, they all seem so full of possibilities, don't they? The notion of extraterrestrial life of beings beyond our Earth has inspired countless tales of fantasy and science fiction. But this isn't just the stuff of stories and movies. This question is very much a part of science, a grand cosmic mystery that researchers have been trying to solve. And one of the most intriguing tools in our quest to find the answer is a formula that might sound like something straight out of a sci-fi novel, the Drake Equation. So, to truly grasp our odds of discovering intelligent life out there in the infinite expanse of the cosmos, we need to delve into a fascinating equation known as the Drake Equation. The Drake Equation, introduced by astrophysicist Frank Drake in 1961, attempts to estimate the number of advanced civilizations in our galaxy. This equation is not a magic eight ball predicting the existence of alien life. Instead, it's a tool, a thought experiment that helps us explore the vast cosmic question. Are we alone in the universe? The Drake equation is a product of seven key factors. Each factor represents a stage in the complex process of the development of advanced civilizations. It's like a recipe where each ingredient contributes to the final outcome. And first up, we have the rate of star formation in our galaxy. It's the starting point because, well, no stars, no planets. The second factor considers the fraction of those stars that have planetary systems. After all, we need somewhere for life to potentially call home. The third aspect looks at the number of planets per star that could potentially support life. This is where we consider elements like the right distance from the star, the right atmosphere, and other conditions suitable for life as we know it. Next, we factor in the fraction of those planets where life actually develops. This is where things get a bit tricky. Life, as we understand it, requires very specific conditions. The fifth factor focuses on the fraction of life that evolves into intelligent beings. We're talking about beings with the ability to manipulate their environment, create technology, and perhaps even ponder their own existence. The sixth component is the fraction of these intelligent life forms that develop a civilization capable of interstellar communication. Basically, the ones who could pick up the phone and give us a cosmic ring. And finally, the last factor is the length of time these civilizations can communicate. This considers elements like the lifespan of the civilization and its technological advances. But remember, the Drake equation does not provide a definitive answer. It's a way to organize our ignorance, to frame our uncertainty. Each factor is filled with unknowns, and that's what makes it so fascinating. Now let's break down these components one by one. The first two factors in the Drake equation deal with the rate of star formation, and the fraction of those stars that have planetary systems. Now, let's delve deeper into this cosmic dance. Stars, the glowing orbs that illuminate the night sky, begin their life in cold and dark interstellar clouds of gas and dust. Under the relentless pull of gravity, these clouds collapse, forming dense cores that heat up and eventually ignite, giving birth to a new star. This process, known as star formation, is an integral part of our cosmic journey. But stars aren't solitary entities. Around them, a swirling disk of leftover gas and dust begins to coalesce. Over millions of years, tiny particles clump together, gradually building up to form planets, moons, asteroids, and other celestial bodies. This is the birth of a planetary system. In recent years, our understanding of the cosmos has been revolutionized by the discovery of exoplanets, planets orbiting stars outside our solar system. From scorching gas giants to icy dwarf planets, these discoveries have shown us that planets are not exceptions, but rather a common feature in our galaxy. Consider this. There are estimated to be over a hundred billion stars in our Milky Way galaxy alone. If even a fraction of these stars host planets, the number of planets could be staggering. So, we have stars and planets, but where does life come in? Join me in the next segment as we unlock another piece of the cosmic puzzle. The next three factors in the Drake equation focus on the emergence and evolution of life. Our journey takes us into the heart of a profound mystery. Life as we know it requires certain conditions to flourish. A planet needs to be in the Goldilocks zone, not too hot, not too cold, but just right for liquid water to exist. It needs the right cocktail of elements, a stable star, and a protective magnetic field. But even with these conditions met, life isn't a given. 
It's a cosmic lottery, a game of chance. Some scientists argue that life is an inevitable outcome of chemistry, while others suggest it's an extraordinarily rare event. The truth likely lies somewhere in between, but it's this uncertainty that makes the Drake equation so challenging to solve. Now let's assume life does emerge. It starts simple, microscopic, but given enough time and the right conditions, it evolves. It becomes complex, multicellular, and eventually, it begins to think. It develops intelligence. But how common is this process in the vast expanse of the cosmos? Are we a cosmic fluke? Or is the universe teeming with thinking beings? Again, estimates vary widely, reflecting our limited understanding of life's cosmic journey. But even if intelligent life exists, can it communicate with us? That's the question we'll dive into next, as we continue to unlock the secrets of the cosmos. The final factors in the Drake equation consider the development of civilizations capable of interstellar communication and their lifespan. Now what does it mean to be a technologically advanced civilization? Well, in the context of this equation, it refers to a society that has developed the technology to communicate across the vast distances of space. Imagine trying to send a message to a star system light years away. The sheer distance presents a monumental challenge. Yet, we've already begun this journey, sending signals out into the cosmos, from radio broadcasts to intentional messages like the Arecibo message of 1974. But communication is a two-way street, and so we also need to be able to receive and understand any messages sent to us. It's a bit like trying to have a conversation across a crowded room except the room is the entire galaxy. Then we come to the lifespan of these civilizations. This is perhaps the most uncertain factor in the equation. It's not enough for a civilization to develop interstellar communication. They also need to survive long enough for their messages to be received. This lifespan could be influenced by many factors, from self-destruction through warfare or environmental damage, to external threats like asteroid impacts or supernovae. If a civilization only lasts a few hundred years after developing interstellar communication, the chances of us catching their signals are slim. But if they can last for tens of thousands of years, or even longer, the odds improve significantly. It's an intricate dance, balancing the birth and death of civilizations with the vastness of space and time. And it's a reminder of just how precious and precarious our own existence is as we continue to explore the cosmos and maybe just maybe find others who are doing the same. The Drake equation shows us that our search for extraterrestrial life is a journey filled with uncertainties but also immense possibilities. So, are we alone in the universe? The Drake Equation doesn't provide a definitive answer. It simply offers a framework to ponder the probabilities threading together star and planet formation and the emergence of life and the rise of civilizations capable of interstellar communication. Yet its true power lies not in the answers it gives but the questions it prompts. But perhaps the most important thing the Drake Equation teaches us is this. To truly understand our place in the cosmos, we must continue to question, explore, and marvel at the universe we inhabit. If you enjoyed this journey through the cosmos and want to unravel more mysteries of the universe, then we invite you to become a part of our cosmic exploration. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the Drake Equation and the possibility of extraterrestrial life. Share your ideas in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be the first to know when we dive into another cosmic mystery. Thank you for watching and keep exploring the cosmos with us.